on the bima next to the shtender standing by to help the Torah reader in my capacity as Gabbai. It is now my privilege to speak with you as a member of the BZBI Board of Trustees and Chair of the Development Committee. What a very strange year it's been. Last time I was in this sanctuary, it was Purim, and the staff and clergy of BZBI were all dressed as Mr. Rogers. The Tom Hanks Mr. Rogers movie had just come out. Remember going to the movies? And our incredible team wanted to emphasize the values of kindness, neighborliness, and community as we reveled together in the joy of deliverance from evil. And then the world changed. Three days after Purim, the rabbis and board made the very painful but necessary decision to close down everything that happens in our building. As Rabbi Abe said at one of our High Holidays town halls, we suddenly needed to learn how to be BZBI in a very new way. We needed to learn how to keep our community warm and interactive and together when all we could see was a small picture on a computer screen. We needed to learn how to structure our days and keep anxiety at bay when most of the normal interactions we take for granted had been stripped away. And we did. We have helped overcome that feeling of isolation that even those of us who live with others have felt throughout this very difficult time. We've expanded our sense of community by creating a volunteer phone tree to reach out to some of our senior members and those living alone, which has begun quite a few friendships that will be deepened when we can meet in person. Our clergy have hosted conference calls for those who don't participate in Zoom events so that they can talk with others in our community. We have helped each other learn to connect in new ways. David Haas has hosted weekly online office hours to help folks with Zoom, and Beth Garskowitz volunteered to coach people one-on-one -on -one so that we can all be together today. Our new executive director, Rebecca Slavin Phillips, held coffee hours and introduced herself to as many of us as she could reach. So many in our community have lost loved ones during this isolating time, and we have found new ways to connect with the grieving. We had a shiva in the park. We gathered from around the world for Rabbi Muslia Shloshim, marking the 30 days following his death. We confronted frightening experiences together. When Philadelphia was engulfed in unrest following the shooting of George Lloyd, we pulled together to make sure that our building was undamaged. Our executive director was on the phone with our security team day and night, sometimes into the next morning. And after the first night, when somebody just needed to come take a look, Kara Levinson, one of our vice presidents, got on her bike to ride over and inspect. We were moved as a community to explore new avenues for social justice to explore how we as Jews can confront racism and to develop an anti-racism reading group to further that. We found new ways to observe our traditions, giving order to our days and to the passing of sacred time. We have prayed together at Daily Minion, increasing attendance significantly since people don't actually need to leave the house, and hung around together to schmooze after on Sunday mornings thanks to Suzy Lander, or to study Torah with Rabbi Mort Levine on Mondays, or Mishmar with Rabbi Abe on Thursdays, Indeed, one member of our shul told me, I've never been to Minyan this often, and it's great. I've made new friends, and I find more structure when I start the day with BZBI. Once the Committee on Law and Jewish Standards clarified the halakha for technology on Shabbat and Yom Tov, our rabbis transformed Shabbat morning services and created a really interactive prayer experience followed by breakout room kiddush. That kiddush time has become truly one of the highlights of my week. As phenomenal as this transformation has been, there are also things we haven't done. We haven't met Rabbi Abe and Rebecca Krasner's baby Miriam in person. We haven't held each other and cried together when loved ones have died. We haven't been able to have the thousand small daily interactions that make BZBI our communal home. Our holiday task force asked us to consider what we have lost and what we have found in this pandemic period. Many of you have shared your thoughts in writing, and we'll hear from you, some of you, about your experiences over the course of the Yamim no Re'im, the 10 days of repentance. I'm going to take a moment now to tell you about my lost and found. During the first couple of months of the pandemic, when we had no Shabbat services, I found it almost impossible to pray. I, I could, of course, pick up a sitter and say the words, but I couldn't really pray even in private at the end of the day before going to sleep when it has usually been my custom to, as I think of it, say a few words to God. And then Zoom Shabbat happened, and we prayed and sang together, or mostly together, we were all alone, 
And miraculously, having been given back the gift of communal prayer, I was able to pray privately again. I still don't understand why I needed to be with all of you as a community to regain my ability to pray by myself at night. But there it is. I guess, for me, religious life is inherently communal. Remarkably, this past fiscal year was a successful one for BZBI. We balanced the budget, thanks to a federal PPP grant without which we would have been in trouble. The incredibly dedicated work of our interim executive director, Harvey Frederick, and our new executive director, Rebecca Slavin Phillips, and the guiding hand of the chair of our finance committee, Brian Boucher, who works tirelessly for this community. Under the leadership of my predecessor, Gary Bramnick, we had an annual giving yield that surpassed our goal as more of you participated in giving than ever before. That was amazing and inspiring. And now we face a new and very uncertain future. We as a board are dedicated to updating you about our financial reality. At our annual meeting in June, we presented a balanced budget that made certain assumptions. We have seen your continued commitment to BZBI through membership and enrollment in the Nesner Hebrew School, and thank you. On the other hand, our early childhood programming program is functioning at under one-half capacity. And that's a concern both financially and because with fewer participating in the preschool play school, we are engaging fewer young families in our BZBI community. This may leave a substantial gap in our budget, and even more of a gap in our ability to grow and nurture the next generation of BZBIers. Some in our community have lost jobs or otherwise seen their income plummet in the fallout of the pandemic. So I ask this of you, if you're able to, after the holiday, go to Shulcloud or call the office and give to our annual giving fund. If you usually give at the end of the calendar year or in the spring, go to Shulcloud or call the office and make a pledge so that we can estimate our ability to meet the congregation's needs for the rest of the year. If you are able to make a continuing gift, no matter what size, $5, $10 a month, something more if you can, go to Shulcloud or call the office and give. We need your help to keep BZBI the enriching, sustaining, extraordinary community that it is. On behalf of Lisa and our daughters, Diane and Eva, thank you all for being our neighbors. I thank you for helping me regain my ability to pray and wish you all a Shana Toba Umituka, a good and a sweet year. Thank you, Suzanne, for those moving words and reflections on this year. We've had to reimagine so many rituals and um, in an effort to keep everyone at a safe distance here in the sanctuary, we're not doing Hagba and Glila as we are accustomed to doing. So we're going to transition now back to our Torah reading to the Maftir Aliyah, uh, can be found on page 106. <laughs> 